Week three of the double murder trial against Alec Murdoch coming to a close. Well, the former South Carolina attorney is facing murder and gun charges for the deaths of his wife and youngest son. WTSC's Tyler Mannion was inside the courtroom for day 15. He joins us now live. Tyler, you walked us through the denial for the mistrial at five. Tell us what happened during the afternoon session. Mike, Don, good evening. Today, it seems as though we finally made it through all that financial crime charge evidence. Finally, as Mark Tinsley, the attorney for the family of Mallory Beach, finished his testimony earlier today. Now, you may remember he actually first took the stand on Monday without the jury present and had a pretty heated cross-examination exchange with Murdoch's attorneys. Today, though, the defense changed their strategy with Tinsley on the stand. Yes or no, is that your testimony previously? It's just, just yes or no. It's possible. You're trying to turn it into something it's not, but, but I probably said words to that effect. Okay. This time around, the defense only took two minutes for questioning. No further questions, Your Honor. From there, the focus of court moved from Alex Financials to his wife's biggest helper, Blanca Turbiate Simpson, described as so much more than just a housekeeper and as made clear in testimony, a friend to Maggie. Her main comment to me always was, no worries. In text with Maggie Murdoch just hours before she was murdered, Blanca says Alec asked his wife to come to their Moselle home that night, where they'd enjoy a meal Blanca cooked. After making the food, the witness says she went home, not hearing the horrible news, until Alec called her the next morning. All I remember is when he said that they were dead, I, I, I dropped the phone. Through the shock of the following hours, she testified Alec asked her to head to the Moselle house and clean up the way Maggie would have liked, prompting emotion as she recounted doing so. It was just a weird feeling going through when I, walked, when I unlocked the front door to get in. Walking through the house June 8th, she claimed in court a lot of items were in unusual spots, like pots, dishes, and even clothes. The defense pointing out that could be explained by the volume of support for Alec the night before. Are you aware of how many people were in there, how many friends, law partners, his sister, who was in the Moselle house on the night of the 7th? No, sir. Okay. If I told you there were 12 to 15 of them, would that surprise you? A conversation between Alec and Blanca from a few months after the murders was also brought up in court. For context, Blanca was confident she knew what Alec wore as he left for work the morning of June 7th because she had adjusted his collar and the conversation in question revolved around what exactly he had on. Alec came over and uh, was inquiring of you what shirt he had on that day, correct? It didn't feel like he was inquiring. It felt more like he was trying to convince me of the shirt that he was wearing. After Blanca got off the stand, the rest of the day included a variety of witnesses, from a caretaker of Alec Murdoch's mother to a friend of Paul Murdoch and even an FBI agent. Now, during those testimonies, it was noticeable that, that Friday feeling, obviously, guys, we're in day 15 here. This jury is tired. It started to show. A few of them dozing off throughout some of that tedious testimony we got this afternoon, but they did make it through afternoon session, concluding the day of court around 5 p.m., and we'll be back Monday around 9.30 to bring you all the coverage you need to know next week. For now, though, live from Colleton County, Tyler Mannion, WTOC News.